Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to be talking about cubic functions and their derivatives. I'm going to be using a GeoGebra resource here I have collected in my calculus collected resources. Let's go to derivative algebraic formulas and let's look at the derivative of a cubic polynomial function. So let's take a look at this. And we have a polynomial function uh, here that's a cubic. That means it's of the form f of x equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, where a, b, and c are numbers, constants. And at the moment, I have a is 1, b is negative 3, c is negative 45, and d is 40. I can adjust these by the sliders or by typing in some numbers here. And if you notice, that it will show you the graph of the cubic function. Uh, since it is a third degree polynomial function, um, it could be possibly factored into three linear factors, each of which would correspond to an x-intercept, which are the points that we have here, here, and here. Uh, looks like 8 is exactly one of them there, and the others are probably irrational, but we can find them at least approximately as 0.85 and negative 5.85 here. You can also see that it's going to uh, have a range of all real numbers. It goes down forever and up forever. And it has sort of one little uh, swiggle in it here where it has a one uh, extremum here and one here. So there are two extrema, one maximum and one minimum. Those are local maxima and minimum, no global extrema. It's, uh, as any function, it's going to have at most one y-intercept, and this one has exactly one y-intercept. Uh, this one here is at 40. That's always going to be 0, comma, whatever d is. It's going to have uh, an inflection point always. It's going to be exactly halfway between the two extreme values there. Now, depending on how I adjust these coefficients, uh, we may not get an extreme value, uh, basically what will happen is as these two guys get closer and closer together, this inflection point is always exactly halfway between the two extrema horizontally, and uh, you can sort of have a degenerate case where the extrema sort of land on top of the inflection point, the extrema sort of disappear, and you only have one uh, um, inflection point there and no extrema, just y equals x cubed, for example, has that. And we can show or hide this with this check marks here. Now, if we take its derivative, it turns out to be a parabola, a quadratic or second degree polynomial. Now, remember the relationship among these graphs of the derivative, the second derivative, and the original function. When the original function is at a maximum or minimum, then the first derivative will be at a um, x-intercept. So in other words, when the first derivative is zero, you have a horizontal tangent line on the original function, and that could possibly be a maximum or a minimum. So if you notice this, uh, this particular secondary polynomial that turns out to be the, the uh, derivative is 3x uh, squared minus 6x minus 45, uh, that actually factors as um, 3 times uh, x plus 3 times x minus 5, and so it crosses the x-axis at 5 and negative 3 for the x-coordinates. Halfway between those, it will have an extremum. That's a local and global extremum. It's either going to be a maximum or a minimum. In this case, it's a, a minimum when that leading coefficient is positive. And that's going to be uh, correspond to the inflection point on the original graph. So halfway between negative 3 and 5 is going to be 1, and that 1 is the x-coordinate of the inflection point here. When you look at the second derivative, it's a linear equation, a linear function, 6x minus 6, and uh, that crosses the x-axis one time. When it, The place where it crosses the x-axis is the extremum on the first derivative and the inflection point on the uh, original function. At least they all have the same x-coordinates, of course, different y-coordinates. Um, what else do we have? Well, when the 
first derivative is positive, say to the left of negative 3, the original function is increasing from forever down up to this maximum at x equals negative 3 and y is 121 in this example. When the, second der when the first derivative is negative, that means the gr its graph is below the x-axis here to here from negative 3 to 5 on x. Then from negative 3 to 5 on x, the y's will be decreasing, in this case from, a negative, from 121 down to negative 135. So that will go from this extremum to this extremum. So when the first derivative is negative, the original function is decreasing. And when the first derivative is positive, in this case to the right of 5, the original function is increasing, in this case from negative 135 up forever. When the, um, let's see, what else? Okay, when the second derivative is negative, which is anything to the left of or less than 1, the first derivative is decreasing. You can see that here, down to this extremum here at 1, negative 48. And the original function is concave down. So all of this is concave down, like an upside down bowl. All the way to this point here at 1, negative 7. And then when the derivative, second derivative is positive, meaning that graph, that green graph there, is above the x-axis, the, the first derivative is increasing. That's this one right here and the original function is concave up. So hopefully you can see those relationships among those basic things with this example. If we were to continue taking derivatives, if we take a, another derivative, then the derivative of a linear function is going to be a constant. It's just 6, y equals 6, horizontal line. And if we did a fourth or fifth, fourth derivative, you're going to get y equals 0 for the derivative, which is the x-axis, and that would be the same thing for the the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, and so forth for every derivative that's a higher order. Now it turns out that here are the general formulas uh, that you get. So if you start with ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, it turns out what you do is you take the 3 times the a for the coefficient here and the power goes down 1 for the x squared term. You take the 2 times the b is the coefficient then of the, the power goes down one, that's the x term. And the cx becomes just c, and the d is irrelevant. Changing d is going to give a vertical change there. Okay, but it does not um, change the value of the derivatives. So it has nothing to do with it. Okay, and then we've seen before that if you take the derivative of this, this quadratic, you take the 2 times the 3a to get 6a. That power goes down to 1. And then the, this linear term, the derivative of that is just 2b. The derivative of the c part is 0, so you get that. And one more derivative, this part, the derivative of the 2b is 0. That goes away. The derivative of the 6ax is 6a. That's a constant. The derivative of that would be 0. And then, of course, any higher derivatives would be uh, 0 as well. We can prove this first derivative formula, and it's given there, and that's a little small to see, so I'm going to bring this up here. And so this is the derivative formula that we were, we were showing, and to prove that, let's, let's remember a couple of things. If you take a plus b to the first power, of course that's a plus b a plus b times a plus b, which will be a plus b to the second, can be found using uh, the multiplication algorithm, which is just the distributive property, or FOIL, if you want to use that acronym for it. b times b is b squared, b times a is ab, a times b is ab, and a times a is a squared. Add these together, combining like terms, the two in the middle add up to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If we take that and multiply it by another a plus b here, then we're going to get a plus b cubed. Multiply the b by each one, distributing that, so that becomes b cubed for b times b squared. b times a, 2ab is 2ab squared. b times a squared is a squared b. 
A times B squared is AB squared. I lined that up above, uh, below the uh, like term there. A times this one is 2A squared B. A times that one is A cubed. Add those together, you get A cubed plus 3A squared B plus 3AB squared plus B cubed. Now you're going to see why we're going to need that. We're going to, and A is going to be X and B is going to be H. <clears throat> An example we're going to see here. So let's actually derive the derivative formula here. Um, f of x plus h minus f of x over h is a difference quotient. Then take the limit as h goes to 0, we get the derivative. That's the definition of the derivative. As you do in, always in these problems, you line up the equals, line up the limit signs, and we, just, um, we have parentheses minus parentheses over h here. The second set of parentheses is the original formula, which is f of x, which is ax cubed plus bx squared plus dx plus d. Then take that same thing and put it here, but in place of the x's, here, here, and here, put x plus h here, here, and here. So really the only calculus step that we've done here is the first one writing down the, the limit, which defines the derivative. Almost all the rest is algebra steps. So the first algebra step is to cube this and square this. So using this property that we had up here where a is x and b is h, this becomes um, x plus h cubed becomes x cubed plus 3h x squared plus 3h squared x plus h cubed. x plus h squared is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Again, using this one up here when x is a and b is h. Now we use the distributive property, multiply this a by each one. That gives us these terms here. And multiply the b across each one of these gives us these next terms. Multiply the c here and distribute the negative one here. So we got this long monstrosity of a thing here, but things are gonna start to look a little bit better now. We take this and the minus d and the d cancel, the minus cx and the cx cancel, the minus bx squared cancels with this one over here. The minus ax cubed cancels with that. So when all those terms cancel out, that leaves these terms here. And you should notice that they all have an h in them. So notice any point from here up, or even this step right here, from here all the way up, if we were to plug in h equals 0, we would get 0 divided by 0. And so that doesn't, um, doesn't help us try to find a limit. That always happens when you have a derivative formula working out from the definition. Now, if you see this, you can factor an h out, though. That leaves 3ax squared plus 3ahx plus ah squared plus bx plus bh plus c, and that's all times h in the numerator. And since h is not 0, it's only approaching 0, we can cancel the h's out here, leaving just the numerator. And now, that's a continuous function of h, so as we can just plug in, h is 0. So we're really, really, there are only two calculus steps, writing down the definition here and using some limit rules that say we can just plug in the h equals 0 here. And if you notice, several of these terms disappear, and what's left is 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c, which is exactly what we said it would be a while ago. So let's, let's put this into work for this cubic polynomial right here. We want to find the derivative of the function 5x cubed plus 6x squared plus 7x minus 2. You can do it in your head very easily. You just take the 3 times the 5, makes that 15, and the power goes down from 3, goes down 1 to 2. Take the 2 times the 6 is 12, power goes down to 1, and the linear term here is just 7. The 2 is irrelevant. It, that part derivative goes away. Okay, see how that works? Okay, you do this one. It should be pretty easy to do it in your head. Do this one on your own. Okay, hopefully by now you figured it out that it is just take the 3 times the 7 is 21, and that goes to x squared. 2 times the 3 is 6 for the x term, and then, uh, then it's just 15 there for the constant term. So it's 21x squared plus 6x plus 15. So in fact, we have some general rules here. Um, the first derivative we just proved was 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c. 
We've proved earlier that the derivative of a quadratic is just 2 times this coefficient. So that's 6a, and then it goes down to the x power, and the linear part is just 2b. The c doesn't matter there. We know the derivative of a linear is just this coefficient of the x, which is 6a. That's a constant function, and of course any higher derivatives of 4 or higher in bigger than 3, that derivative is 0. And so this is infinitely many times differentiable, but once you get to the fourth derivative and up, they're all just a zero function. There's a screenshot from what we just looked at. Okay, so let's look at some, some summaries. Uh, cubic polynomial functions are continuous and smooth. The domain and range are both a set of all real numbers. It has one y-intercept at 0d. It either has one, two, or three x-intercepts. It has either one local minimum and one local maximum, or no extreme at all. It always has exactly one inflection point, and if the extrema exists, this will be horizontally halfway between the two extrema. The first derivative of a um, cubic polynomial is a quadratic or second degree polynomial function. The first derivative always has 0, 1, or 2 x-intercepts. If the first derivative has two x-intercepts, then these x-values correspond to extrema on the original function, one max and one min. And if the first derivative has zero or one x-intercept, then the original function has no extrema. It sort of collapses down to just having an inflection point uh, only. And the original function is increasing when the first derivative is positive, meaning it's above the x-axis. The original function is decreasing when the first derivative is negative, when it's below the x-axis. When the second derivative is, is at its one and only extremum, the original function is at its inflection point. Um, the second derivative of the cubic polynomial is a linear or first degree polynomial function. The second derivative has exactly one x-intercept. At this x-value, the first derivative is at his at its extremum and the original function is at its inflection point when the second derivative is negative that is it's below the x-axis the first derivative is decreasing and the original function is concave down when the second derivative is positive that means the graph of the second derivative is above the x-axis the first derivative is increasing and the original function is concave up so at this point, instead of continuing one at a time to find derivative formulas for, you know, say, fourth degree polynomials, fifth degree, and so forth, we're going to try a little more general approach. In our next video, we're going to be looking at uh, the derivatives of power functions and eventually work our way up to talking about some rules that will help us to generalize what we saw here for cubics to any polynomial function or a lot of it will generalize to any sum of power functions. So see you then on the next video.